Hey guys, what's up? It's Nate. We're back at it again with another turbo build episode. And uh, today we're gonna be installing the oil pump and a new Mishimoto oil sandwich plate that I got from Amazon. I've seen some good reviews on it and I've seen a few friends use it before, so I know that'll be a top quality piece. This is just a, uh, like an AutoZone replacement oil pump, but it should do good. It'll do awesome. Let's get to it. First thing we're gonna need to do is flip this motor over so we can get to the bottom side. First we're going to install the oil pump and then I'll show you guys how to do the oil sandwich plate. Next we're going to grab our oil pump and the gaskets that come with it and there's this little o-ring. see if I can focus on it. But uh, there's this little o-ring that comes with it that you're going to need to install right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. push it in place just like that and then after that the next thing you're going to do is grab your RTV and I'm using ultra black so this stuff is supposed to be like really resistant to oil and pretty much do its job by keeping all that oil inside of the motor and not on the ground so what we're gonna do is take this stuff right here and according to the Honda manual Oh boy, that is super bright. So according to this, uh, we're going to apply the liquid gasket on the inside of that dotted line. So pretty much all in on this side of that line. And we'll go around this dude, come around here and tighten it up. If you've never applied RTV to anything before, what you're gonna do is open it up and if it's a brand new tube, of RTV to flip the cap upside down and stab the top of it and that'll break the seal and let you get some RTV out but what you'll do is you'll take a little bit of it put it on your finger just like that and be careful not to squeeze the tube too much because it is a metal tube and it'll be hard to decompress this tube once you squish it so we'll just take a little bit and following that same line, like in the manual, we'll just apply this gasket maker to the desired area. And pretty much we'll just keep doing this until we get everywhere where we want, covered in gasket maker. And uh, yeah. Then we'll be ready to put this on the motor. Perfect. So once you've applied the RTV to your oil pump, you're ready to put it on the motor. Now we're at the motor. What you're gonna wanna do before you install your oil pump is get a little bit of new oil, clean oil on your finger and just put it right around this surface right here. And you'll do the same thing on your, your seal, your rubber seal on the inside of it as well. So that way, it doesn't catch on anything. This will help you install it easier and it will also help that seal from falling apart while the engine is running. All right, now we're ready to install this oil pump. So we're gonna wanna be a little bit quick. It's been an hour now and we're ready to torque these bolts down. You're supposed to torque all of these down to eight foot pounds, but I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low of spec. So I'm just gonna torque them all to 10, but I would highly recommend you do it to eight because that is the manufacturer's recommended torque spec. So while I had the motor flipped over, I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, install the oil pickup tube. So all you do is get the gasket and you'll slide it right over that. And then you'll take your pickup tube and just set it on top of there just like so. And you'll take your two nuts, screw them on there. And then you have two bolts that go up here for the 
top side of the pickup tube. And these as well have torque specs. Uh, the bolts are torqued to eight pounds, or where they're supposed to be. And then these nuts down here are supposed to be torqued to 17 foot pounds. So, like I said before, I don't have anything that can go to eight foot pounds, so these will probably get torqued to 10. But I do have something that can go up to 17, so I will torque these to 17 foot pounds. Also, I might have forgot to mention, these nuts are 12 mm nuts and the bolts are your standard 10 millimeter. Now that that's done, it's time to flip the motor over. This right here is the Mishimoto oil sandwich plate kit and uh, you can get this from a couple different places. I got this one off of Amazon as well. I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can pick this up if you want to get it and, uh, and if you do, you'll help out the channel. So let's open this up and see what's inside. What comes in the kit is the oil sandwich plate, this uh, oil sandwich plate adapter right here, and I believe an Allen key. Yep, right there. It's a little Allen wrench right in there. If we can get that to focus. Yep, so you get your plate, adapter, and Allen wrench. And there's a couple spots on here for uh, extra stuff, but we'll get into that once we open this package up. We're gonna get to installing this and uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, before we do that though, this is the sandwich plate right here. Give you guys a little bit closer of a view. Um, I believe these are two extra ports that uh, you can hook up anything, so if you have a oil pressure gauge or an oil feed line for like your turbo or anything these would be the spots as well as this spot right here seems like a pretty good quality material so let's get to installing this something I found out here you won't actually use both of these so you'll either use one or the other so in my case I just have to use the silver one so if you are well obviously you're gonna be working on a Honda so a D16 so you'll most likely be using this silver one actually you will be using the silver one and uh, this brass one uh, I'm not really sure what else what this applies to but obviously not this motor so the thread pitch is wrong it doesn't screw on so this one does fortunately screw on so I'm gonna take some Teflon tape and put it on these threads and uh, get to installing it on here. So the thing with Teflon tape is you're gonna wanna go with the threads, so that way when you go to screw on that, that adapter, it doesn't all just kinda like unravel itself. So you shouldn't need too much. A good single wrap or wrap and a half will do just fine. You can just rip that off, take the excess, wrap it around there just like that you'll give it a couple turns with your fingers make sure it's on there now that we got some Teflon tape on here we're gonna go grab our oil sandwich plate and you're gonna want to make sure the rubber is facing the block because that's how you're gonna get your seal and I'm actually gonna clock this just off center just a little bit so that way when I have my sensor in here. I can still use both of these ports as well as this one with the other sensor right here. Before we can thread this new adapter plate on here we need to get some clean motor oil and because this engine block has been through the, uh, the wash basically you're gonna want to take some motor oil put it on this ring right here so that way you get a good seal. Now that you got oil on there, you can finally take your fitting and clock it how you would like. And then from there, you're gonna wanna take your socket and tighten this down like you would a uh, normal oil filter. So you'll get it about hand tight. And then you'll wanna go a quarter to a half turn past hand tight. So I'll do that right now with the wrench. Sweet, that's not going anywhere. 
and this is pretty much ready to go. One thing I will say though, is there's this little fitting on the left side here. This fitting, unfortunately, is not torqued down at all when it comes in the package. So you will need to either tighten this down, or in my case, I'll remove it before installing the motor. So that way I can put my oil feed line here. I would also recommend that the top two ports where the Allen key can go, uh, that you take those out and cover those in Teflon tape if you're not going to use them. But if you are, then just remove them and put in your new fitting with some Teflon tape and you should be good to go. All right, so there's one last thing I wanted to leave you guys with before I called it a night. And uh, that's, if you have this little gold adapter still, do keep this, especially if you're not gonna run your, your little black box that normally connects into here. Because what I did was I took this little piece, see if I can get it to focus on here. So I took it, took my grinder to it, and just cut in two little grooves, and then stuck some O-rings on there, and then oiled it up and slid it right into that hole and it turned out to be a perfect fit. If that's something you guys are looking at doing because you're not gonna run your black box, you can definitely do this. I did two O-rings so that way it wouldn't just sit there and be cockeyed in case uh, one of them was, just one was all messed up. So um, if you guys are interested in doing that and running this to an oil catch can, that would definitely be a very good option for you. Yeah, all I did was get some motor oil on these O-rings right here. Once you get it all nice and moved up, then you'll just take it, kind of wiggle it in there. Let's see why not. That's a little bit. Yep, that's how you do that. That's perfect, that worked out. From here, you can take a rubber hose and fit it over this and then just clamp it down with a, uh, with a clamp just like this. And uh, I know this one's a little bit bigger, obviously a smaller one, but um, this would do the job just fine. And that's how you can get another line ran if you need help venting your crankcase. So, and that'll prevent you from having to tap the block, which I know some people do, and having to find a thread pitch or a bolt that's big enough for this hole, is just kind of a pain. So I thought this was a nice option to do. That'll be it for tonight. And Chris finally came out of his shell, but that's all right. It's the end of the video. So if you guys like this video, leave a like and if you have anything else you want to see done, uh, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this video. And if you want to see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button and hit the little notification bell so you get the notifications. Yeah. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.